Today I thought we'd take a look at this DeWalt 20 volt max lithium ion battery. We get no indication. We are showing about 18 and a half volts on output. Let's just see what's going on with it. We're going to use the T10 security bit. We do see some corrosion on the board. We have some corrosion here as well. And there we go, and that is our LG cell number of the 18650 cells. 4.0. That's not good. 4.0. 4.0. 4 so, these two here are down the 2.0. Four. And this might just be the easiest pack to repair as far as replacing cells. It's actually not in a rigid cage that's soldered in between and a grid. Another thing DeWalt does, they don't have a lot of their smarts in their pack. We do have some monitoring here that um I hadn't had the tools or the um charge apart for the 20 volt max i'm gonna be more careful what i say but it looks almost like we have our individual cell monitoring coming up to the pack where the tool and the charger can uh, can take care of it as we check out this battery we see the layout here it's embossed on top of the battery here we can see we have b plus and b minus obviously and we get 18 and a half volts as before and this high current connector utilizes both of these parts of the connector here but if we notice these six here those three across and those three below it are separated and they've actually did a good job here they call it THID C1, C2, C3, C4 so it looks like cell cluster one so I think if I go to negative and go to what will be cell cluster one, we get our four volts like we would think. And then two is eight, our three is 12, and so far so good. But when we go to our cell cluster four, cell cluster four is showing 14 and a half. So that's why when we jump all the way back to plus, we're only getting 18 and a half. So those same cells we discussed earlier are lined up with what they're calling uh, C C4 cluster here, cell cluster four. So we see how that's laid out. Um, the other thing, TH. So I believe, let's leave it on voltage. No voltage from TH to plus. We do have voltage in reference to ground so I'm assuming we're going to have a, a RT or NTC somewhere on this board probably where that potting is so somewhere under here is probably a, R, a NTC maybe there so if we just read resistance from positive to the TH we do get around 12k at ambient temperature around it's roughly about 69 degrees currently here on the bench so just putting my hand here, it should start going down as an NTC, and it does. So I think we're correct in our assumption there. The ID pin, I still am not sure about. This is the ID pin here. If I go to voltage, it is reading in respect to the positive and not the negative. 
So I would think if I could ohm to negative with a lower potential, I'm getting about 810 ohms. I don't know if that's something or not. So I've never had the board off the seat. Because I'm assuming it's letting the uh, tool know whether you have a, say, a smaller pack. It's another one I got to look at. This is a DCB203, only a two amp hour pack. So evidently, um, this larger three amp hour pack is going to, at the very least, have a different resistor for ID. I'm not sure about that yet. Um, but since I have an issue with the battery cell replacement, and it looks like I got a lot of corrosion on this board. So this actual, uh, this board actually isn't working here. Give me any indication. Um, it actually will not stop the pack from working. It's just simply, um, at least I believe it to simply be an indication, um, just for convenience. But um, while I got it apart, I definitely want to see if I can fix that. I definitely want to put two new cells in here. So I think I'll do that first and see how the video goes so it doesn't get too long. That was pretty darn easy. So definitely a little more to it than I thought. Just gonna let this board sit in some white vinegar and clean that corrosion up. Just got a cheap toothbrush. Gonna let it sit and I'll come back and scrub it. We'll see what it looks like. It's soaking about 15 to 20 minutes. It's looking tremendously better. I'll hit this spot right here too that has some corrosion starting on it. So the board cleaned up better, but after the um, vinegar, we're going to rinse the board and scrub it clean with some rubbing alcohol. Just went ahead and took this board off so we could clean it better with the vinegar. And now we're going to clean it all up good with alcohol. And it's just going to be able to, um, to be cleaned up better, just taken off so it'll lay flat. I didn't have much to clean on this board, so I didn't worry about taking it all the way off. But we did clean that corrosion up. That was here I was worried about it being like a diode or a resistor there that it corroded up because it was kind of piled up but it was nothing but that solder joint so that all cleaned up I think really well so after cleaning this board up it really don't look like the same board but if you can tell I had to do a patch job right there the microscope will help this be seen you couldn't see much while I was fixing it but I scraped back that trace and wrap some wire around and solder it to the wire going through because if you can see that that pad had corroded away so when I cleaned it off a little solder back just pulled it right on up it wasn't much left but I scraped back the trace and hooked it to the wire as we'll see the wire and it goes to that via right there but as we'll see on the other side we also had to solder it back right here we see that this side did something with the negative side but the positive side it really didn't go anywhere. It goes through this via here and goes to the push button. So you can barely see that trace going towards the pad under that push button. So that's all cleaned up, looking pretty nice. So uh, I test for this board. Since we have a sail out, we don't have any voltage across the red and the black. So I have about 21 volts coming off my power supply hooked to it. 
And there we go. Already 18 volts. Get two. Let's see if 16 volts will get us anything. It gets us one. So we get one at around 16 volts. It goes out at 15 volts. So right at 15 and a half volts, we start getting our one. By 18 volts, we get two. At 19 and a half volts, we start getting our third LED. Awesome. Back now with some 1500 milliamp hour cells. They're charged up to around four volts, real similar to the pack. So they're actually going to be pretty balanced. I'm just going to go ahead and prep these cells and get them ready to put in. I won't spend a lot of time on this part since I have multiple videos showing how I typically do that. So. Just going to hold this on here for now. Looks promising. So briefly, if we look at R11, it is at 80 A. So A is usually a times 10 multiplier. So that should be an 800 ohm resistor, at least on some coding standards. And it is reading 0.8K. So that is what I'm reading. That also um, that resistor is also connected to this ID connector so I think that's the reason why we was reading that across that ID pin was that resistor right there so we don't have a lot of smarts on this board everything must be done the tool and the charger as mentioned earlier but we do have an 8 pin chip right here And this 7718 chip, if we look at this, the Texas Instrument version of it, it's anywhere from a two to five series cell battery um, over, over voltage protection circuit. So it, um, if we look here, we'll have our cells connected to the sensing circuit. And then we only have one output, so it's not much to this chip really. It's got a lot of specs on the shutdown. That's actually the pinout if you're interested. Um, a little eight pin, they call them a DPJ package. We have our voltage and then our um, our cell sensing all the way through five that it can do. And pin eight is our output. So, so not a whole lot to the circuitry on this board.
So one thing, I don't remember if I had it on video or not, but when I had all my connections loose from the uh, board and I went to ID and my negative, I actually was not getting my 800 ohms. So all these cells had to be connected in that battery monitor and output had to go to that transistor. And apparently that puts that 800 ohm a resistor into the circuit so that might be worthy of noting um, especially if I work on a different size pack I do I do have a smaller pack I'm going to look into just hadn't got around to it yet it'll be interesting to see the differences in them of course we tested our our battery indicator and it works great we'll see what the meter reads yep 20.2 volts. Awesome. There we go. That's awesome. If you learned a little bit about this 20 volt max lithium ion repair, please like, share, subscribe, and thanks for watching.